What's going on? Today's episode, I'll be sharing with you guys the ultimate guide to the seal row lift. This is really underrated and an underutilized lift because a lot of people don't have the bench. People say it takes too long to set up, but it really is a great lift overall for power lifters, bodybuilders, some Olympic weightlifters. It's even great for recreational lifters who have lower back issues. It's great for lifters who want to get more volume in without taxing the lower back, but they still want to hit the lats, mid back, upper back, all that great stuff. It's a great posture enhancer, and you don't have to buy a super expensive seal row bench. You could actually do it yourself, like I'm gonna show you in this video. I'm gonna show you the setup, I'm gonna show you some variations, show you how heavy you could really go, and the possibilities are endless. You could also do other lifts on the seal row platform, like training your rear delts, Dorian Yates style, and all that great stuff. So I really think you guys should incorporate this in your program. And without further ado, let me show you guys. All right, so first things first, I'll be showing you guys the basic setup of the seal row. Very simple. If you're in a home gym, use cinder blocks. And if you're in a commercial gym, you could use boxes where you do box jumps. Or you could just improvise. You could stack up plates. But generally speaking, the taller you are, or the longer your arms are, the higher the bench has to be in order to get a respectable range of motion. And I say respectable because you see a lot of guys doing partials on seal rows. The way I have it set up right now is perfect. I'm getting a really good range of motion, great stretch. If you care about the longevity of your bar, simply put a squat pad on. And even though you're hitting it really hard, the squat pad is really going to make your bar last a lot longer. So there's two ways I like to do the seal row. The first way is the penlay style fashion, which basically means you're resetting on the floor each time. And this makes it easier to breathe. This is only like 205, but it's flying pretty fast. The second way to do it that I really like is more of the bodybuilding style fashion where you got constant tension, you're not making the bar touch the ground each time. And I like this a lot for getting, you know, great pumps, good back activation, all that stuff. And since it makes it hard for you to breathe, I like to get more out of less weight by simply doing a retraction at the top, pausing, then you pull, and then you pause. High reps, you won't need a lot of weight to get a good stimulus in the upper back or the lats. Speaking of upper back or lats, depending on where you grip the bar and where you pull to is going to have a different impact. Now you could also unrack the bar if you want to, I just did that to show you, but you guys already know my favorite variation is of all time, it's a semi snatch grip steel roll. This is really good for the upper back, has carry over to this snatch grip deadlift and it's just a great lift overall. Now you see a lot of guys who have specialized bars for seal rolls. You could easily do the same thing with a trap bar. Now you're able to pull even higher. This is really cool and it's a great alternative to the seal roll bar. You could also do these in a reverse grip fashion. This is really good for lat activation and just another way to target your back. And you could do these without putting the bar down or you could just do it in a penley style. It doesn't really matter at the end of the day. You're going to get a great back workout nonetheless. Now we got the good old dumbbells. This is very similar to the trap bar, except we're working each arm independently. And this is really cool. This is really good for the lats, especially. And since you have no leg drive, it's just a great lat builder. The lift right after this is the crush grip seal row. I never tried this before. I kind of just thought of it on the spot, but it feels kind of like a T-bar row in the seal row fashion because it's close grip, it's a neutral grip. And the lat activation that you get on this is crazy as well. But you have to have hexagon dumbbells if you want to try this out. The last thing you're going to see in the video is the rear delt flies. This is kind of like the Dorian Yates machine I was talking about at the beginning where he's lying down on his stomach in the seal roll fashion just doing the rear delts. That's pretty much what influenced me to do it. But really good. And that's what I'm emulating right now. It's my favorite rear delt lift of all time. So there you guys have it. Hope you learned something from today's episode. That's the ultimate guide to the seal row. I showed you the setup, showed you some variations, how heavy you could go on it, and all that great stuff. So let me know in the comment section below, do you incorporate the seal row in your training? Have you incorporated it before? And just as importantly, do you plan on utilizing the seal row in your future training? Let me know in the comment section below. Always happy to help. See you guys next time.